My name is Inder Komar. I'm the legal director of Komar LLP, and I'm very happy to be able to speak to you today about uh, a lawsuit uh, involving an Iraqi woman uh, who I represent. Uh, the lawsuit involves the legality of the Iraq war under international law. Uh, my client and I filed this lawsuit in March 2013, and for the last couple of years, we have been litigating whether or not the Iraq war was illegal under international law uh, in the Northern District of California. Uh, in December 2014, the lawsuit was dismissed, and subsequent to that, we filed an appeal that is still pending in the Ninth Circuit. Uh, we filed our opening brief in uh, May of 2015, and then in June, we were joined by a number of amicus uh, filings, amic amicus briefs uh, by interested parties who wanted to support our case and support the, um, the lawsuit. Uh, some of these amicus filings included the former U.S. Attorney General Ramsey Clark, as well as a uh, nonprofit called the Planet Hood Foundation, which was founded by uh, a former uh, prosecutor from the Nuremberg trials. Uh, the lawsuit currently is uh, still before the Ninth Circuit, and we have an oral argument in two weeks on December 12th, in which the three-judge panel will hear our arguments that the Iraq war was illegal. We are asking the court for a court order, uh, first finding that the Iraq war was illegal, and secondly, uh, holding that the defendants in the lawsuit, who are former uh, Bush administration officials, including former President George Bush, uh, Vice President Dick Cheney, uh, Donald Rumsfeld, Colin Powell, Connolly's Rice, and Paul Wolfowitz should be held liable uh, for the damages that they caused uh, to the nation of Iraq and to the Iraqi people. Uh, so we are asking the court to hold them accountable and to uh, order them to provide for restitution uh, and payment to uh, uh, Iraqi victims of the war, innocent Iraqi victims who were uh, who were uh, impacted uh, by the invasion. Uh, that's basically the heart of the case. We are citing to uh, Nuremberg principles, so principles that were laid down at the Nuremberg trials more than 60 years ago by uh, an international tribunal composed of American, British, French, and Russian judges. At the Nuremberg trials, uh, the Germans and the Japanese, uh, the Tokyo trials, were convicted of what's called aggression. Uh, aggression uh, uh, being what's called the supreme crime under international law. Uh, aggression is the idea that countries can't wage war against other countries without a good reason, without a lawful reason. And what happened at the Nuremberg trials is that this panel of inter international judges um, stated that uh, it was against the law for the Germans to invade other countries uh, without a good reason, without a lawful reason, without being under attack. Uh, after World War II, of course, the United Nations was set up, and a treaty was signed by uh, many, many countries, including the United States, uh, to set up the United Nations. And as part of that treaty, the U.S. gave up its right to declare war unless it was lawful under international law, uh, which includes you know, a declaration from the Security Council that um, uh, military action is, is appropriate. Of course, none of that happened with Iraq. Uh, Iraq was not... Uh, a threat to the United States in, in 2003, and the Security Council had never okayed the invasion. So we allege that as a result of those acts, uh, the war was illegal and unlawful. Uh, we also allege the war was illegal and unlawful because of the misrepresentations and lies that happened uh, starting in 2002 and through 2003 and into the war. Uh, specifically, we think there were two different areas of lies. So first was this notion that Saddam Hussein and Al-Qaeda were in, in league with each other. Um, the evidence was flatly to the contrary, and we allege in the complaint now for the Ninth Circuit that that was false, that was a lie, that was told by the administration to drum up support for a war. Uh, the second thing uh, that we allege was a lie was that uh, the allegations that uh, Iraq had a weapons program or weapons of mass destruction um, that, again, was just simply not true, and the evidence coming out of Iraq at the time was to the contrary. Uh, the heart of the case is that there was a, a rush to war and that, that it wasn't a mistake. It was, it, was, it, was, it was intentional and that it was knowing and that what was really at stake was these, um, 
was this um, really kind of foul neoconservative ideology that the U.S. military has the right to intervene everywhere in the world, um, even if it breaks laws in doing, in doing that. And that's what we feel should be really challenged, and that's what we're hoping um, that the court will recognize and, and, and observe and rule on is whether or not um, leaders uh, really um, can do that or not. So what's at stake actually, in addition to the rule of law with respect to the Iraq war, is the extent to which our leaders can go, can get away scot-free when they commit crimes. And that's another issue that we're presenting to the court. Uh, the district court held that the uh, leaders, at, you know, former President Bush uh, and Cheney and the others, uh, were immune from proceedings, um, finding that they had uh, an immunity under a civil law called the, the Westfall Act, a federal law that provides immunity in certain cases. So we're arguing that that immunity is inappropriate here, uh, that the immunity should be um, should be pierced and cast aside uh, because of the, uh, the, the really, really extreme levels of wrongdoing that we think happened in the run-up to the war. Um, and, and we really have to think about that as a, as a country as to whether or not we should be giving our leaders carte blanche to uh, engage in these acts and to, um, uh, to be able to use violence against other people uh, in a way that leads to tremendous levels of suffering and whether or not people should be held accountable uh, for those deeds and for those acts uh, simply because uh, they're directed at other people outside of the country and not directed internally uh, to us who may be citizens or within the, the borders of the United States. So that's, these are deep, deep questions that we have to ask that are, I think these are also very pressing questions uh, as we enter uh, a political era, not just in the United States, but globally, where uh, uh, we, we do see the rise of the extreme right wing everywhere and where uh, there is the tenor of fascism in a lot of places now. And we have to ask whether the lessons from World War II uh, and the lessons that came, uh, that created the United Nations, if we're going to recall those and, uh, and think about what it means to live in a functioning democracy where, um, where, where people are held accountable to, to laws regardless of whether or not they are our leaders or not. So we are very much looking forward to this oral argument on December 12th. We're very hopeful the court will, uh, will listen to us and will provide us a ruling uh, related to the legality of the Iraq war. Uh, you can follow the status of the lawsuit at witnessiraq.com. Uh, that's witnessiraq.com, one word. And again, my name is Inder Komar, and thank you very much for listening.